Now I know what you're thinking. Amanda, don't you own two sonic screwdrivers even though one of them hasn't been in your possession for like two years at this point? So at this point, why are you even bothering saying you have two sonic screwdrivers? Well, I do have one, it's just not with me. So therefore your opinion on this should be a positive thing. Yes, the answer to that is definitely, definitely yes. But a lot of my fellow Whovians disagree. In fact, a lot of them disagree on the term Whovian, which is something that I just found out originated in an American Doctor Who fan club like 20 years ago, so there's something you probably didn't know. The common argument is that the Doctor uses the sonic screwdriver too much to get himself out of all this trouble, the writers and the directors use it as too much of a deuce ex sonic screwdriver, nah, that didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. It has too many powers, it doesn't focus on the original opens thing, and maybe screws something, and apparently once it did function just as a screwdriver. And it's true that in Classic Who, the sonic screwdriver was actually written out of the show in 1982 because they felt like they were just using it too much. It was the crutch, the magic tool that could fix all of the things. This is science fiction, they said, not Harry Potter. So why the heavy use of the Sonic? Everybody say it with me now. Marketing. Anecdote. In the 1990s, there was a show called Sailor Moon that was basically an expert at doing this. It was creating things in the show specifically to sell them. There was no other point of them existing except to give them to children. Any weapons, any power upgrades, any of that. If you've ever wondered why in the opening, the inner senshi, they focused on the nails when they were doing their transformation with the wands and everything, and then the outer senshi when they showed up had this nice, lipstick montage, all because of marketing. Only existed because of the toys, because the wands in the, for the inner senshi, they came with a little nail polish in the tips of them that you could paint your nails in. You could pretend that you were actually doing your senshi makeup thing. And the outer senshi wands were literally called lip rods. And inside the little, the, little the, the rod at the bottom, you could take it out and there was a little tube of lipstick in there. And that still works today. The newest merchandise release for the 20th anniversary of Sailor Moon is there's the compact for Sailor Moon that has a little face powdering thing. But they just released the other day new nail polish line that's designed to look like the tops of the transformation wands. Just like they did in the 90s, but this one apparently is for grown-ups because it costs $52. It's only available for pre-order in Japan, and they're not shipping it internationally because there's too much alcohol content in the nail polish itself. So if Bandai decides to market it internationally someday, hopefully in the next couple of months, I will totally be your marketing girl for that. I'm up, I'm up for that. I'm available. What? Mama didn't raise no corporate whores. Mama raised a corporate call girl. People tend to forget that Doctor Who not only exists to entertain and to educate, but also to make money for the Biebs. Not Justin Bieber, the BBC. Kids see the thing, kids want the thing. Kids want the parents to buy the thing. And what better way to fight off the monsters that live under your bed and behind the sofa than with your very own sonic screwdriver? Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye! Someday I'm not going to be able to cross Sailor Moon over with everything else that exists on the planet and today is not that day. <laughs>